Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and if you've been watching the videos in this series you have already seen me putting the uh, armature together for my paper mache raccoon. When you weren't looking I went ahead and changed this uh, left front leg. I told you I was going to do that in the last video because I didn't like the way it was sitting. In, in fact I even went ahead and cut through the arm uh, so that I could bend the elbow just a little bit more and I bent the wrist a bit more. And then um, I also, uh, while you weren't looking, changed my mind. I told you in my last video I was going to give him a fish. And then it occurred to me that since I'm a gardener, um, the most likely time that I'm ever going to see a raccoon up close is when he's stealing my corn. So I decided to give him corn instead. I have ordered some uh, dried Indian corn. Uh, I think it's a miniature version, kind of a popcorn type. Uh, and it isn't here yet. So now what we get to do is start working on the aluminum foil. Um, I'm going to use aluminum foil for the toes and probably for the feet. Um, I'll use it also for the face because that's a, he's got a really delicate face and we don't want to put too much paper on there. The rest of them, uh, I'm going to use uh, some newspaper, just crumpled newspaper and masking tape. So let's go ahead and get started on that. For the fingers, I'm just going to wrap each one of those wires with some aluminum foil and I'm going to try really hard to make the fingers thicker at the top than they are at the bottom or at the base I guess you can say. They have a real big pad on the ends of the fingers and I'm trying to squish it onto that wire really tight. Now we get to um, put the padding on the rest of him. I got some nice wide um, masking tape I'm going to be using. Hey, now he is so much sturdier. That is great. I am, I keep looking at this tail and I think I'm going to cut a couple of inches off. Much better. I'm going to do the inside of the back legs now. And as you probably know, the, the hind legs come up to a point about here underneath the tail so so then you'll have the um, both legs come together right here um, right below the tail so you still have to stand up real important to keep checking because you're going to be moving things around Still very solid, in fact more solid than it was to start with, so that's good. Well, he's not done yet, obviously, um, but the sun is shining and I want to go play in the garden, so I'm going to stop at this point. This took quite a long time, and it isn't done yet. It, in addition to actually giving him a head, head would be nice, um, I also want to do some work on his tail, get it um, a little bit smoother. You don't want a lumpy tail on our raccoon. Um, I'm going to go sit in front of the computer, probably, and sit him on my lap 
and look at photographs from as many different angles as possible and try to get all these shapes in exactly the right place. And that's just kind of fine-tuning. We do that every time we do a sculpture. Um, it's never really done until we decide it's done. Uh, but this is a really good start. I'm going to check. He's still balancing really well. I'm going to change. Right now I'm going to change this my tail because I want it to help uh, make sure that he stays where he belongs, that's good. Now we've got a tail that's actually sitting on the table as well. And uh, the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the head. That'll be done with aluminum foil because you can get really precise with aluminum foil in a way that you can't with crumpled paper. But paper is obviously a whole lot cheaper. And by that time, I should have my corn <laughs> so I can actually see exactly where that hand goes that's holding the corn before I start putting paper mache on this fellow. Once he gets his head on there, I think it's actually going to turn out really nice. I'm also going to be trying a, uh, a method of making fur that one of our guest posters out on the, on the blog suggested. I think he uses um, Elmer's glue and toilet paper and he made some feathers that are just fantastic. I'm going to show you that uh, at, the, at the very end of this process. I'm going to be um, practicing with that. So until next time, um, come over and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. There's a whole lot of projects there that take a whole lot less time, so come on and check it out. I'll see you there.